This video is meant to be a basic overview of the main buttons that you'll need in the Move Controller software to be able to load and run a part. Additional information can be found in the manual. And if you have any additional questions, you can always email our support department, support at warjet.com. These blue crosshairs here represent the two cutting heads that are on this machine and are currently active. Over here on the top left, we have buttons to control head one and head two. If we click on these arrows, we can expand this panel and we've got buttons here for turning water and abrasive on and off automatically and manually for Z1 and Z2. Down here, you can control if you want a particular Z carriage to be active or not. If you're just going to be cutting a program with a single head and want to park head 2 out of the way, click on the sleep button and that sends the Z carriage to the top of the Z travel. and you'll notice that the blue circle for that head disappeared over here. Then you can click on the dock button if you want to park that Z carriage entirely out of your cutting area. In the top right hand corner we have outputs that can control heads 1 and 2 for manual water and abrasive on and off, auto on and off, as well as timers to time things like abrasive when you're calibrating your abrasive flow. And then you've got buttons for pump on and if you want to switch to low pressure on the pump. Normally when we're going to cut, we click on these two buttons here that put the head into automatic mode for water and abrasive. Over here we have a button for controlling the ballast. You can click on that and that will either raise or lower the water level. And then if we click on this button again, that'll release the air from the ballast and the water will drop back down. Now down here in the bottom middle, we can click on the plus button to choose a program to cut. I'll go ahead and load this program. It shows a cross here for the cutting head. Then you can do things like if you want to cut multiples of this part, you can click on the part and choose array and specify how many rows and columns and spacing between the rows and columns and then click on accept array and it'll grid it out for you. Also you can do things like rotate and mirror as well as reset back to original. Over here on the right hand side we have buttons for things like zooming to the extents of your cutting area. You can use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Also being a touch screen you can use your fingers to pinch zoom in and out like you would on your cell phone. Over here we have a ruler button so we can use that to click a couple points on the part and see the XY dimensions of that array that we just made as well as the diagonal between those two points. The move button allows you to move in either incremental or absolute mode in any axis. And then the offset area allows you to save positions on your table. So this offsets tab is for work offsets from G54 to G59. You can see the X, Y, and Z locations for those work offsets. And then you've also got positions tab where you can save XYZ position on your table. So then you would move your cutting head to this saved position, start your program from a G92 location from these start points. And then in the maintenance area, you can track the life of your consumable items and get notified when items are getting towards the end of their life. Down here in the lower right hand corner, we've got things like jogging. Right now we're in continuous jog mode. 
In continuous jog mode, you've got three speeds, rabbit, turtle, and snail. Each of those can have their own speeds assigned to it. If, for example, you want to move slower in snail mode, click down here, go into jog settings, and specify a speed for that mode. There's also incremental jog. Again, there are three presets for this. If we click on this thousandth of an inch and I click down here, I can zero my coordinates. I then, for example, can jog up in Z. Each time that I click on this button here, it'll move by a thousandth of an inch. If I activate the ten thousandth, each time I click on there, it goes up by ten thousandth of an inch, or a tenth of an inch. And these values can also be customized by clicking down here and going into that jog settings that we looked at just a few moments ago. And down here are those values. Down here it shows us our absolute x, y, z, a, and c values based on where we are on the table. If you click down here, it'll zero those values out so that when you move, you'll be able to see how far you've moved by. Click down there again to zero those numbers out again. And on your lower right hand corner, other things you can do is adjust feed rate override. So up here, if this is set to 100%, we would be cutting at 100% of the program feed rate. If you want to cut a bit faster because maybe you program the material for one thickness, but now you're cutting it out of a different thickness rather than reprogramming, you can use this feed rate override and you can adjust it. In this case here, we'll be going 25% faster. Based on how you're logged in, you can lock people out of being able to change things like the feed rate override. In the settings area, under users, we've got our different user levels. And then on the activities, you can specify who can do what. Since right now I'm not logged in as anybody, I can't do anything. So let me log in as an admin. And if we go back into settings, Right now, operator level and higher can adjust the feed rate. So if we change that to, for example, maintenance level, and then I go and log in as operator level, and then down here, click down here, we can see that we can't change these values or move the slider. In the lower left hand corner we have information about the estimated cycle time for the program and then the actual time and then how many parts are to be run in the queue and what program that we're on. You can set this up so that once it's done with one program it'll go immediately to the next program and start cutting. Essentially you can manually make a nest of parts if you don't already have a nesting package. If we want to cut something else out of the same material after this array is done, first of all, I'm going to lock this program into position and jog to where I'm going to want to cut the next program. Then click down on the plus button to add another part. It puts that into the cutting area. Again, if I want to, I could array that. If I want to cut something else, again, lock that part into position and then pick another part, jog to where you want to cut it, and then lock that into position. Now down here in the lower left hand corner, we can see the three programs that's going to run in the sequence that it's going to run them in as well as the estimated cycle time for all three programs. When you're ready to start cutting, down here at the bottom can click on the run button. And if you want, you can have the CNC file shown here in the background. And crosshair shows us where we are on the part. 
anything ever goes wrong or you just want to stop the part to inspect it you can click on the stop button then click on the part and do things like jump to pierce point or jump to any point so if you lost your cut part way through that last hole and you do jump to any point you can jump back to a point somewhere on that cut where we're still cutting well and then move to that location and then resume If we stop again, click on the part again, and choose jump to a pierce point. I just want to jump to the next pierce point. I just have to be in the general vicinity of lead in, and when I click, it'll find that pierce point, and then you can jump to that point. So with that, you should have the basics to be able to load and run a part in the Move software. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email support at warjet.com or give us a call. Thanks.